What's up everyone, I'm Taylor and it's time for the Weekly Rundown. So it's officially 2021, can you believe it? As you can see, I'm still in the celebratory mode with my New Year's outfit, but I hope you all celebrated saying goodbye to 2020 in a fun, safe, and healthy manner with those closest to you. But before we keep throwing around the New Year, New Me stuff, we will never forget 2020, that's for sure. Now, of course, there's all the obvious that happened within the year, COVID, the election, COVID, but that's not what I want to focus on. I'm taking you on a ride through all the OMG moments and memories of 2020. Absolutely zero in toilet paper. No toilet paper in there at all. To kick things off, we can't forget the long lines and panic buying of household goods, especially toilet paper. I was totally out, not realizing that people are buying it everywhere they can get it, and there's not one single roll in Target. It's pretty dumb that, you know, everybody all of a sudden thinks they're gonna need wads and wads of toilet paper. I totally get it would suck to run out of TP, but I just didn't understand the rage. I just want one pack. No, not one pack. Who would have ever truly thought we'd see full-on fights over this soft little staple? TP wasn't the only thing flying off the shelves, as we know. Disinfecting wipes, hand sanitizer, masks were also not very easy to find. But besides those obvious things, we even saw a shortage of hair dye. Yeah, clippers and hair dye were flying off the shelves with sales apparently increasing more than 160%. I mean, what could really go wrong giving yourself a DIY hair transformation, right? Mm, yeah. Well, we couldn't just not go see our hairstylist. We also couldn't go to the gym. So what else saw a sales surge? Stationary bikes. Yeah, Peloton sales surged. Get this, 232% and definitely had everyone talking about them. Even Beyonce joined in on the fun. With more people transitioned to work from home situations, video conferences became quite popular, we know this. But let us not forget when this one Twitter user shared a photo of a video meeting she was having and apparently her boss accidentally turned on a filter and couldn't figure out how to turn it off so she was stuck as this lovely potato for the entire meeting. But besides all these obvious things, people around the world did some of the most wacky things to stay preoccupied. Here's Raphael Seth with people just doing their best to make this version of life a little more fun. No, I ain't messing with you. You can't be destroying my life.
Reinventing normal is completely right, Raphael, and people have done a darn good job at that. But this is another one of those things that really made me turn my head this year, the broomstick challenge. It took over the internet, again, one Twitter user writing, everyone is in their kitchen like this tonight. Some were saying it was just a phenomena, but NASA warned not to get too swept up too fast because this can be done any day of the year. Now, TikTok. It's a name we've probably heard and seen this year almost as much as we've seen the word COVID. Okay, not actually, but you, you get what I mean. Here's a look at how TikTok shaped so many moments and made so many headlines in 2020. Fleetwood Mac can thank 420 Dogface 208 for skateboarding them back to the top charts. If you're wondering why you've heard this song so much, here's why. Everyone was also bored in the house. Okay, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. And while people were bored in the house, they found themselves, well, flipping the switch. Look, I just flipped the switch. I don't know nobody. 16-year-old Charlie D'Amelio found herself to be the biggest TikTok star with nearly 105 million followers and a net worth of 8 million dancing dollars. And her 20-year-old friend Addison Rae is very close to her with over 73 million followers and an estimated net worth of 2 million do-it-for-the-TikTok dollars, making them two the most talked about of 2020. The popular app also made as another platform for voices of change. I saw the highest number of COVID-19 cases it has ever seen. An inside look at celeb life. You have to stop commenting daddy on all of my posts. A library of food recipes and hacks, beauty and style tips, and so much more. TikTok is definitely one of those new things that came around and stuck. But something not new but also saw a boom? Video games. Revenues rose an estimated 20% worldwide fueled by such popular titles as Animal Crossing New Horizons, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and Among Us. And I know several people who fell into the Animal Crossing binge playing, or whatever you call it. To get even more specific with viral memories, I'm going to turn things over to Jeannie Moss as she looks back at the most memorable oddball occurrences of this crazy year. 2020 was a roller coaster year on a roller coaster with more downs than ups. At Belmont Park near San Diego, the passengers were stuffed animals to lighten the mood during maintenance runs since no humans were allowed due to COVID. The pandemic inspired ingenuity, be it the useless but satisfying mask launcher, or the plastic hug time that allowed a great-grandmother to hug her grandkids, featuring gloves normally used for examining the nether regions of livestock. Hormel tried to bring home the bacon with this marketing ploy, a mask with a scent of bacon. It was a year when weathermen and reporters got nabbed, caught with their pants off working from home, and a soap opera actor had to make out with a mannequin. The lack of playdates during the pandemic made for strange bedfellows. Two-year-old Theo Brady became inseparable from his bony buddy, Benny, but mom said after Halloween. Yeah, well, Benny's still there, though he did break in too. Fortunately, six-month-old Rich Humphreys is intact after making news as one of the world's youngest water skiers. And magician David Blaine reached new heights. Suspended from 52 helium balloons at an altitude almost five miles up, he released parachuting to Earth on a perfect touchdown. More of a fumble was this botched art restoration in Spain dubbed... Animals were a scream in 2020. Chico the parrot at a zoo in England parroted Beyonce's hit. And if I were CNN's Joe Johns, I too may have tossed a step stool. 
After raccoons invaded the White House lawn and despite traps, twice tried to join Joe for live shots, once even grabbing at his trouser leg. And there was the fly that invaded Vice President Pence's hair for two minutes during a debate. Pizza Groundhog hogged a slice in Philadelphia while Pizza Rat Man entertained folks in New York. But what's more entertaining than a blooper? Yves Dubois may have blown the answer, but the fast food chain Popeyes gave her a $10,000 check because they said they thought her answer was right. It was our favorite game show blunder of 2020. Genie Mouse, CNN. New York. Ah, so many good ones in there. There were also so many good movies released despite the setbacks, plus an even bigger kick in streaming. After the break, we're taking a look at the lovely things we binged and the movies my man Manny liked the most. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. While so many things have become popular this year, there's one thing that just got even more attention than it was already getting, and that's streaming services. Yeah, I know you've all finished a few good binge sessions in 2020, but what were you watching? According to Variety, these were the top 10 shows streamed. One, Coco Melon. Two, everyone's favorite, The Office. Three, The Queen's Gambit. Four, Tiger King, oh Carol. Five, Ozark. Six, Outer Banks, love me some John B. Seven, The Umbrella Academy. Eight, Unsolved Mysteries. Nine, Cobra Kai. 10, Love is Blind, definitely guilty of binging that one. But it wasn't just about the TV shows. Movies were just as time consuming. Here's Manny the Movie Guy's most favorite films of good old 2020. Hello, movie buffs. Almost 10,000 films were released this year and only a few deserve recognition. Here they are by genre. For documentary, let me direct you to three eye-opening films about my homeland, the Philippines. First, A Thousand Cuts by Ramona S. Diaz about freedom of the press. There's also Showtime's The Kingmaker about the political career of Imelda Marcos. And then there's A Swang about President Duterte's violent war on drugs. The first documentary to win Best Picture at the country's Academy of Movie Arts and Sciences Awards. For comedy, I enjoyed Borat subsequent movie film. Politics is comedy gold in this brilliant sequel that received an extra dose of freshness with the inclusion of Maria Bakalova as Tutar, Borat's downtrodden daughter. For romance, I choose Palm Springs. Yes, it has sci-fi elements, but what holds the movie together is the unlikely romance between Andy Samberg's Niles and the rebellious Sarah, played wonderfully by Kristen Milioti. For animated films, my heart belongs to the Irish folktale Wolf Walkers, but I also have a soft spot for the afterlife soul and the Chinese-themed over the moon. For sci-fi, I love the gritty Russian thrillers Sputnik and Amazon's The Vast of Night. Both films did not invent the wheel, they're both about aliens, but what they did with their material is truly outstanding and original. For horror, I choose the super funny, it's scary, freaky, because of the performances by Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton. For foreign language film, one movie that stuck with me is Brazil's Bakurau, starring Palm Springs' own Udo Kier. It makes a searing political statement by using sci-fi themes. For action, Brad Lurie's The Outpost, a well-choreographed war movie that speaks volumes about sacrifice. For drama, I enjoy the American dream Minari, Spike Lee's Vietnam War in memoriam, The Five Bloods, and Aaron Sorkin's The Trial of the Chicago 7. But 2020 is also when female filmmakers ruled. There's Diane Paragas's immigrant story Yellow Rose, Chloe Zhao's realism film Nomadland, Kelly Reichardt's heartfelt minimalist First Cow, Equa Mizangi's multi-perspective family immigrant drama Farewell Amor, Eliza Hitman's coming-of-age film Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, and Emerald Fennell's brutalistically funny Promising Young Woman. I clapped loudly in the end. I'm Manny the Movie Guy, wishing you a healthy and mighty 2021. 
Thanks, Manny. And piggybacking right off of shows and movies looms even more in the entertainment world. We'll take a look at what else was happening in Hollywood after the break. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. Entertainment, like nearly everything else in 2020, was altered and shaped by the Rona. There was a lot of heartbreak and drama and plenty of surprises in the world of celebs. Here's a look back at some of the most prominent happening in Hollywood moments. The celeb gossip kicked off in 2020 with a move that sent shockwaves throughout the world. On January 8th, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan announced they were essentially quitting the royal family. On January 19th, Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston were actually photographed together, definitely a talker. On March 11th, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson were the first celebs to reveal they tested positive for COVID. Idris Elba and other famous figures soon followed. Once COVID hit, all festivals, big and and small were postponed. There was a moment during the spring where you could argue that the most buzzed about person in the country was Joe Exotic. Claims of bad behavior associated with Ellen went viral in March, then soon after there was talks that the Ellen DeGeneres show could be getting canceled amid falling ratings and reports that the comedian was rude to her staff. Judge Judy announced she will end her long-standing partnership with CBS and once the contract is over in 2021, then get ready for Judy Justice, but on another network. In May, Lori Laughlin got caught up in the college admission scandal and was sentenced along with her husband, Massimo Giuliani. Harvey Weinstein also saw the bars as he began serving a 23-year prison sentence. The Bachelor announced that Matt James will be the leading man for its 2021 season, making him the franchise's first ever black male lead. Nickelodeon shared that SpongeBob was a member of the LGBTQ plus community. The Dixie Chicks dropped Dixie, announcing they'd just be the Chicks, and Lady Antebellum shortened its name to Lady A. Kanye West announced that he was running for president of the United United States as a member of the birthday party. Taylor Swift dropped not one but two acclaimed surprise albums in 2020. Britney Spears filed paperwork to suggest that she doesn't trust her father Jamie Spears or his handling of her conservatorship. Hashtag free Britney. The Kardashians announced the last season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians after 14 years. And after five years of dating, the voice coaches Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani announced their engagement. Hearts around the world hurt after Chrissy Teigen and John Legend suffered a pregnancy loss with their third child. On top of all that, as every year, Hollywood lost many familiar faces. After the break, we're taking some time to honor the lives and legacies of some of those we had to say goodbye to. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Weekly Rundown. So 2020 has been a tough year for all of us. Circumstances made even tougher because of the many lives lost. Some of those lives were people whose legacies and impact were wide ranging and long lasting. Mark Berger takes a look back at a few of those famous faces to whom we said farewell in 2020. How wrong it is to judge people on the basis of what they look like. The passing of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg ended her nearly half-century battle for equality, one that inspired new generations to continue the fight. Inspiration was also central to John Lewis's legacy. You must get out there and push and pull and make America what America should be for all of us. His struggle against social injustice carried him across the Edmund Pettus Bridge and eventually into Congress, where he became one of its most influential members. I prefer it over Euclidean coordinates. The movie Hidden Figures enlightened most of us to Katherine Johnson's impact long after the fact. He knew that if I had done it, it was right. She broke race and gender barriers in the 60s, contributing calculations critical to putting man in orbit and eventually on the moon. Journeys that Chuck Yeager also paved the way for. I'm no hero. I just a kid that, you know, it's the right place at the right time. But he also became the first pilot to break the sound barrier in 1947. 
At the dawn of rock and roll, Lucy. Little Richard was the wake-up call. My friends thought I was crazy, and, and my cousins thought I was a kook. But hit records and flamboyant style made him a pioneer. You got no to hold. Crossover appeal in country and pop music powered Kenny Rogers to a career with 24 number one hits and sold out concerts around the world. Not many people get to see the end of the rainbow, and I think I have. It was not Eddie Van Halen's voice, but his genius on the guitar that put a stamp on the 80s, influencing decades of wannabe rockers. Kobe Bryant wanted to be the best when it came to basketball. Five NBA championships and a scoring ability few could rival, making him among the world's most popular athletes. This has been absolutely beautiful, you guys. I can't believe it's come to an end. Um, you guys will always be in my heart. When movies needed a tough guy... Anybody else want to try their luck? Kirk Douglas was often the one to call... This sleep. Bond. James Bond. Or maybe Sean Connery, the first 007, who also earned an Oscar and later a knighthood. Playing real-life heroes Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, and James Brown put Chadwick Boseman on the Hollywood map. Well, good night, Emma. But his role as a superhero in Black Panther made him a transcendent figure. We all have a superhero in us. If there was a king of television... 50 years ago, I was a page right here. Regis Philbin may have had the crown. More appearances than anyone. Are you serious? Too many fun moments to count. What is, we love you. That's very kind. Thank you. One Jeopardy contestant spoke for millions. Affection for Alex Trebek. His passing from cancer, just one of hundreds of thousands of cherished loved ones lost during a 2020 we'll never forget. Mark Barger, NBC News. Now I know just because we have a one at the end of our day instead of a zero, it doesn't make everything better. But I truly do wish you all a happy and healthy new year. Oh, by the way, don't forget about murder hornets. <laughs> yeah, thanks 2020. I'll see you next week.